Hey everyone, it's Alexander Robinson. Welcome to the channel. This is my review for Joyride, which is not the thriller starring Paul Walker that was released in 2001, but rather the R-rated, raunchy, buddy road trip comedy released in 2023, directed by one of the writers of Crazy Rich Asians. The movie opens up with two Asian girls, one of them adopted by two white parents, and the other whose parents are actually Chinese. As they grow up together, one of them, Audrey, played by Ashley Park, is a successful lawyer, and the other is Lolo, played by Sherry Cola, who is an aspiring artist. So the two of them head off to China along with Lolo's cousin, Deadeye. The purpose of this trip is mainly because Audrey is trying to close this deal with her firm, but Lolo sees this as an opportunity for Audrey to find her birth mother. So tagging along with them on this trip is Audrey's college roommate, and the four of them end up going on this crazy road trip across China where a bunch of shenanigans ensue, and it's a journey to try to find Audrey's birth mother. So this is the directorial debut of Adele Lim, who has done a lot of work in television before, mainly as a writer, but her first step into the world of film was being a co-writer for Crazy Rich Asians, which I think is a really great rom-com. She is also a co-writer on Disney's Raya and the Last Dragon, which I think is a pretty underrated Disney film. So now she makes her directorial debut with this movie, and judging by the trailers, it looked like it could go one way or the other. It could be outrageously funny, or it could be so bad that it's painful to watch because the worst movies out there are comedies that try to make you laugh but don't. And I gotta say, after the movie ended, I thought long and hard about the last time I laughed this hard at an R-rated raunchy comedy. And I think maybe the last movie to do that was The Hangover, all the way back in 2009. I admittedly have not watched that movie in full since it came out in theaters, but I remember laughing hard at it. And I'd say Joyride right now is a much better movie movie than The Hangover. It does follow a similar formula where you have a bunch of friends who go off on this trip together and they just get into all kinds of weird scenarios. And one of the biggest things that works about this film is the camaraderie between the cast members. All four of these women are absolutely hilarious and they each bring something unique to each of these characters. Ashley Park is more of the straight woman. She's the one who's trying to take things a little more seriously. She's not as risky or outrageous or even as quirky as the other three are. But also because of the fact that she was adopted by two white parents and was raised in America, she doesn't quite identify with being Asian, so there are scenarios that the other three women are just kind of like, uh-huh, yeah, we're taking note of this. Sherry Cola might have been the biggest standout of this film, and there were a lot of moments where she stole the scene with her jokes, the way she delivered them. Out of these four actresses, she's definitely the one that's the most goofy, but out of these four characters, she's the one that's probably the most confident and doesn't really have any self-esteem issues. Stephanie Hsu, who had just come off the success of Everything Everywhere All at Once, is probably the most self-indulgent of these four women. And what I mean by that in terms of her character is that she's an actress, she's very high profile, and she can't stomach the thought of her fiance finding out some secrets about her past, and she basically has to keep up an image. And there are points where she looks down upon Sherry Cola's character. And then Sabrina Wu is Deadeye, and they're very quirky, almost deadpan, but obsessive with K-pop. Huh? And their dynamic with the other three characters in this movie is just hilarious. All four of these women really work well together, and it's just funny to see the situations they get themselves into. There's the scene that you probably saw in the trailer where they come across a white woman traveling China who's actually a drug smuggler, but there's a sequence much later on involving a bunch of NBA players that is very outrageous, and it's just insanity. It's really funny, and these women commit. Now, as funny as this movie is, and as outrageous and as raunchy as it gets, and Believe me, it gets raunchy. The movie actually does have a strong heart. Huh? Obviously, there's the subplot involving Audrey trying to find her birth mother, and I won't go into the details of that plot. All I'll say is that it might feel a little predictable, and if there's any problem I have with the movie, it's that 
Near the end, it does go through a couple of tropes that we've seen before in these buddy comedies, or even in romantic comedies. But I would say that this movie does it better than some of the more recent comedies that have come out. And one of the reasons for that has to do with the revelation of Audrey's birth mother. And it's a moment that I honestly didn't see coming, but it absolutely works, and it feels like the right decision that could have been made with this moment. Outside of the predictability near the end, I don't have much to complain about when it comes to this movie. This is probably the hardest that I have laughed in over a decade. The chemistry between all of your actresses is fantastic. The direction's great. The editing is really clever and plays into the film's humor as well. And it's also really nice to get a movie like this because if this were made about 20, even 15 years ago, uh, I guarantee you this would have been a raunchy R-rated buddy road trip comedy featuring men. Uh, the fact that there's a movie like this with women that are able to do these raunchy, outrageous stuff uh, is welcoming. I know there was Bridesmaids back in 2011. Uh, that was a big hit. Uh, when I first saw that movie, I hated it. But after watching a bit of it on TV during the 2020 pandemic, uh, I found myself warming up to the movie and found it to be really funny. Uh, same thing with Joyride, except my first impression is that it's hilarious. So this is a really nice surprise and one that's worth seeing in your lifetime. The next two weeks in terms of movies are gonna be big because we've got We've got Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 coming out, which I'm hyped for, and then we've got the internet's favorite double feature that they haven't seen yet, Barbie and Oppenheimer. So I know people are looking forward to those movies, but if you get a chance, check out Joyride because it is absolutely worth your time. It's certainly one of my favorite comedies in recent memory, and it's one that I hope to own on Blu-ray when it comes out. I absolutely love this movie. And there you go, that's my review for Joyride. I hope you enjoyed it. And now I wanna know what you guys think about the movie. If you've seen it, what did you think? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell button to get notifications. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd. I'll see you guys in the next video. But until then, have a good day and take care of yourselves.